so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here, you guys. It took me so long to get used to a, a microphone with a cord. <laughs> I'm not kidding, I haven't seen one with a cord in a long time. I'll tell you I'll tell you something very interesting. You see Freddie sometimes kicking away, lifting his legs, and a lot of the time he would be doing something like this. Just kicking the cord out of his way. Oh that's what that's right. I just, we found a beautiful way to do it, an elegant way. Yes. <laughs> you did everything. And you and you translated him so well. Yeah. So let's start by offering both of you congratulations on your Golden Globes win. Of course, it's about yeah. <laughs> So lucky for all of you. Um, I also wanted to say this is probably why, because we had Robbie on the cover of the Rap Last magazine. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, gotta thank you guys for that. We we thank you, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'd like to celebrate um, great work. Um, the other thing is that I've heard about is that this movie has just hit like seven hundred and fifty million dollars for the worldwide box office. Yeah. 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 Did you not know this? I don't know. I'm, I, I, uh, I don't know. Well, it's not on the box office email. Not on the box office email. Yeah, no. Well, people, people are talking about it. I mean, they did mention outside, but like, I was already, I had no idea. This is headed toward a billion dollar movie, pretty much, right? Right? state of shock since November 2nd when the film came out and then we get an award for it right. wow I mean geez I just, it's just um, well, you know, what, what has shocked you why, why? Hmm? What, what shocked you what has shocked 750, you 750 wait let me say this nine percent of the people that live in South Korea the population have gone to see Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody how about that I mean it's just a phenomenon and you don't think about that, right? I mean, I try and set my sights very low with box office because we live in, I don't make Marvel movies or... But this is a movie about a superhero. <laughs> we nearly had a phone box scene. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but it's, it's so great for the industry, right? I came this close to selling this before even Rami got involved to a streaming company. Really? This goes. Because yeah. my lawyer's like, this is the most amazing financial deal for you. you got to take it. And I was like, Freddie invented playing to the masses. I want to create that in a theater. It's not going to be streaming on an iPhone or laptop. Not as if I've got anything against them, because I'm sure I'll be working with them at some point. But it was, it was about creating, you know, what Queen do and what Freddie did so amazingly is bring people together. And their dogs. And I can't believe you did the dog enjoy the film, by the way. Well, back up a second, because you've been working, you've been working to bring this story to the street for a long time. I don't know, a decade, more than a decade, right? right. So, um, tell us why, and tell us why you worked so hard to do that, and why it took so long. Well, first of all, whenever you... But you have to talk into my phone. When, <laughs> whenever you... Um, Acquire the life rights to somebody or a band or multiple people. It takes such a long time to build a story for the cinema, for the theatrical audience. And you know, two hours and 15 minutes, and you've got the guy's whole life, and the, the band's life. So that took such a long time because there was so much of Freddie's life that for me was cinematic moments that we, I wanted to tell and didn't want to sacrifice. I sound like one of those, like, this is now, I'm not sacrificing this, not sacrificing that. So it took a long time to kind of build this story. We always set out to make a PG-13 crowd theater. This was never R-rated, it was never the darker version of Freddy's life. Because again, I, I wanted to carry on Freddy's legacy to a whole generation who doesn't know who Freddy was and don't know the music. And there were so many reasons that I thought if we can get this right, it could be you know, a really fun film for people to go and see. So that was what 
took so long. And then there was. Are you saying that other people wanted to do the project but wanted to see the dark version? No, I mean obviously studios are the opposite. Yeah, they you know, want, yeah. No, no, no. But I'm saying a lot of press spoke about when the film came out. It wasn't, you know, it didn't go into the underbelly of Freddy's life enough. It wasn't dark enough. It wasn't R rated. This kind of thing. So. That was never in our minds. The studio didn't force me to make a PG-13 movie, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah. It was always that. So that took a long time to kind of get the storytelling right. And then, you know, we had some stops and starts because you only get this opportunity once. And I wanted to get it right. And I never felt that the screenplay was right. You know, we were in prep with Dexter Fletcher maybe five, six years ago to direct the film. And we didn't have a cast yet. We were early prep and I just turned to the to Amy Pascal at the time, who was Sony, mm -hmm. and Dexter, and said, I'm not comfortable with the storytelling, I'm not comfortable with the script. And I don't want to look back and say, we should have done this, should have done that. Mm -hmm. So that took a long time. Um, you know, development does take a long time, a lot of you guys know. So that was really the bulk of the time. Um, and then, you know, I met this guy. <laughs> you know, Dennis O'Sullivan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This guy that works for me, Dennis O'Sullivan, he, he called me, I was in London shooting a film, or making another picture, and he said, I think I found out Freddie. And I said, who's that? And he said, you know, it's the guy that's in Mr. Robot. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Yeah, I could just see how that screen. Right, yeah, right. He's from California. He does not, does not scream right. Freddie Mercury, but And he said, I, I really, you know, please, please get on a plane, come home and meet him. And I did, and we met and spent five hours together. I mean, it's Freddy. It was, I mean, it's, it was, there was just something there. And we, you know, we spoke a lot and, and it was like suddenly the project had ignited in a way that I was really excited about it. The script was coming together in a really good shape and then walked around me. And there we have it. I mean, I remember Clint Eastwood once said to me, you know when the stars align, you know when it feels right. And this felt so right and everything felt so right. Go now. No, there's a long time. He always says as well, talking to Brian May and Roger Taylor in, in England. So you know, you found you found uh, your Freddie. <laughs> well, he yeah. I mean, I think Brian May thought the film would never get made. I think you know. We, yeah. I think he thought I was bluffing when I said this time we're actually going to make the film. But I, you know, I then called them and said, you know. The same thing that Dennis has said to me, and you know, Rami flew to London, and he had, you know, I wasn't there, uh, so he had an amazing dinner with Brian. And Roger, and you can continue this. Well, well, no, but you, at one point, I think Brian or Roger said, "And where did you find him?" Right. 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 And uh, Graham goes, "Sherman." Oaks. Sherman. Oaks. <laughs> <laughs> Brian May was like, "Hmm, interesting." So. We've not seen Mr. Robot, so where is he from? Is he Sherman Oaks? <laughs> <laughs> Just south of Zanzibar. <laughs> but you're right, I mean, I was shocked because they knew me from uh, Mr. Robot, which is obviously this profoundly alienated, uh, you know, very, um, someone with, with intense social anxiety, and to, to think of, you know, the Elliot and, and I, on a stage talking to thousands of people would be uh, out of this world, of course. But I don't know how they thought that that guy was going to play Freddie Mercury, but thank you for the faith you had, uh, knowing that I could act. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you knew coming into the project that there had been versions that had been attention, you just sort of locked yourself off. And I didn't history. know. I. I no, I didn't really know that that was going on. Uh, I didn't know that there was a film uh, that had been in the works about Freddie Mercury or Queen. I was just kind of work, you know, head down working on Mr. Robot. Uh, so looking for a job. Looking for a job like actors do. <laughs> yeah. And so, so we'll talk about how how did he did he audition? Not initially, no. But okay. I, I mean. Obviously, Graham has to find someone to distribute the film at some point, and 
Uh, no, no studio is just going to say, oh, that guy, that's, you know, if they know me, they probably know me from Mr. Robot, and so they'd have to see something. So I had a few days off in New York, and Graham and Dennis said, can you put something on tape? We believe in you, but we have to show something to the studio heads. And uh, I found something on YouTube uh, interview, and I watched it a couple times, and I'm not a fast learner, so I'm not one of those people that can just pick something up right away mm -hmm. and, and turn around and deliver it. But with Freddie, I just remember my mouth go a little bit agape. I had seen him perform. I knew of him, but I didn't really, I never heard him actually speak before. And I was so taken by him that I soaked it in immediately. And I think within an hour, I had turned, like, turned around and had a tape sent back to Los Angeles from New York. Well, then I had to wait because uh, you know, it would be received. Oh, thank you so much. Um, and then, you know, as it was being, as Graham was doing his diligence of getting into everybody and making sure this story was told, I, I just would not be in a position where I, I was on my back foot if it ever did get greenlit by a studio. So I asked him for everything possible to get ready in case it did happen. And thank you for giving me dialect coach and piano lessons and singing lessons and a choreographer, a movement teacher, all the things before you know, this had even been greenlit. So uh, that's, a, that's an astonishing thing to happen. Uh, and thank you. a little bit of limbo the whole time because you never know what's going to happen in this business. Mm -hmm. But you, I, I just, you had to be prepared. I had to be prepared. I would never take this job if I had three weeks to play Freddie Mercury. There would be no chance. That audition tape, not even on the audition tape, but well, that interview tape, I think is, it's a, uh, dated April of 2016. Yeah, so. And you shot so, in when did we start? Well, we Tentative started prep. Um, what are we now? He's 17, the end of 16. Well, uh, no, principal, yeah, like seven, prep. Yeah. And then, yeah, the end of 17, 2017. September 2017. Okay, so that's a year plus yeah. time. Yeah. Right. So I had over a year to prep. To prepare, and so, and so. Don't get me wrong, I also had, I shot a movie and did a arduous, arduous season of Mr. Robot in the process. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a picture of me one night I took uh, going home from Mr. Robot and I had the Freddie Mercury teeth and I put them in and I just for posterity's sake took a photo of me <laughs> as this, this uh, mix between Elliot and Anderson and Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I will, I will put that up. Will you? Okay. Please do that for, for, for the world. Um, you know, for all the people who bought a ticket for your $750 million. $750 million. And, okay, and so to talk about learning how to sing and play piano, and, and then you also have to learn how to talk with this thing in your mouth. Yes. Uh, I know, which is, which is the hardest of those things. Well, singing. I remember talking to you in that meeting early on, and I have to give this man credit because I told him early on, I said, I'm not a singer, I'm not a dancer, I don't play the piano. I said, <laughs> I, I, I said, if you give me enough time, I will do everything humanly possible to get there. And I remember, here's another thing I'm gonna post now that you, not post, but I will share with the world, is that you'd say, I, if you give me the opportunity and the time, I will be for this. And at, uh, there is a shot of me sitting at the piano doing Live Aid, where I was hitting the keys so hard there is uh, a bit of blood splattered on the piano. So it was an immense amount of work. Yeah. 
It was amazing, and I'm just gonna correct one thing. He never really auditioned. I mean, we never. He was the first guy we went to to make an offer to play Freddie Mercury. Yeah. There was a lot of talk about other actors before and whatever, but this guy, you know, that five hours we spent together, and then he sent this this little interview of Freddie that he did, and we knew that was Freddie. That was it for us. And we were done. Yeah, and were you uh, a fan? Like I can sing every every word. I'm sorry of every song. Yeah. yeah. Did you know the music? I knew, you know, I knew Bohemian Rhapsody, I knew We Will Rock You, I knew We Are the Champions. I did not know Hammer to Fall or Radio Gaga. I did not know. I knew Killer Queen. Uh, but the, now, I mean, me and the boys, our <laughs> band, <laughs> we have gone through the entire back catalog. I think we, we know almost every song now. And. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I have to say, I have to thank this ensemble of actors. Uh, a, never have I ever been on a, a project where people have kept in touch to this degree. We are have become such a tight knit group, and I've done projects where I've spent a year with pe years with people, and have great relationships, but nothing quite like this before. I, it's a testament. To, uh, just how much you want to rise to the occasion of this band and how, how the influence they've had on so many people. And in doing so, we just, we bonded like no other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll probably see them tonight after this. Wow. <laughs> so you were talking about the, the singing part. I mean, even if you did sing, to sing like Freddie Mercury is like, you're saying you're like, it's just not possible. Well, his voice no, is so on, I mean, that's unique. Right. right. We were never looking for a singer, we were looking oh. for an actor. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Um, you know, you can't find that voice. And if you I could, it most probably would be someone that couldn't play the role. I mean, Mark Mattel can sing like Freddie Mercury, who mm -hmm. we used to do some pre records, this kid right. from Nashville that Brian Roger found. But he's not Freddie Mercury. So to me, it was like we had the perfect fit. And I didn't think an audience would really think, well, he's not actually singing, or he's not singing like Freddie Mercury, so we're not gonna, you know, go and see yeah. a movie or like a movie. It's about his storytelling. The music is the music, it's Queen music. Yeah. We didn't want to reinvent it. Yeah, exactly. And um, it is mixed incredibly well between Mark and myself, and of course, the majority of it is, is Freddie Mercury right. uh, by uh, Paul Massey. And I will say, you can't, you really, you can't tell. Right, yeah. It really does feel very job of blending yeah. those voices. When you've got so, Brian May overseeing the mix, yeah, you're you're pretty good you better get it right. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. um, I, I do want to ask um, there's a weird situation with this film in that the director's not here, yeah. and Brian Singer started out as the director, and kind of some weeks before Rob was removed from the film. Is it is it odd for you now? I don't know what your relationship was with him on the set, whether you guys connected, whether you feel that he's he's the credited director on the film. I you know, I had prepared, as I said, for a year to do this and uh, I, I I knew this character to me to a degree I felt like I knew him very well. So uh, every day going uh, into work, I, I felt like I was very confident in what I was doing, and uh, like I said, having that ensemble of actors and and Graham leading the way as well was uh, it, it, we got through it in a way that felt pretty seamless. And when Dexter came on, uh, he is someone who just brought this lightning bolt of energy, mm -hmm. uh, and of course he knew the material so well because. He uh, was so many years prior considered to direct, as Graham said, prior. Mm -hmm. uh, prior, so um, it, it wasn't that difficult. No, not. It was not, and Graham, for you, is it? It's got to be. Tough. It was not my favorite moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, That's honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, wow, kind of at the time, I was thinking it was par for the course for this project, right? And I, what else could go wrong? You know, unfortunately, Brian had issues and his mom was very sick and he wanted to go and see her. And, you know, we wanted to finish a movie and the studio wanted to finish a movie and he wanted a hiatus 
for like seven, eight weeks. It was a holiday time. And um, I spoke to the studio and they said, would you rather finish film? And I said, yes. And so they did what they did. But it's, you know, we kind of stayed out of it. And just my job was to keep these guys pumped up that the film's not going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, you know, be up and running again with a new filmmaker. And, and we had such an amazing team. And, you know, we all know that cliche, that word that filmmaking is such a collaboration. But this one really was that from everyone. So many people were amazing. And, we were just talking a minute about our casting director, Susie Figures, who cast this movie. You know, uh, Susie Figures and Rhonda Kress, incredible cast. And you have to thank Tom Siegel for the cinematography. John uh, Tom Siegel works uh, so often with John Ottman, our editor. And uh, between them, we were, we were, I felt so confident. What Tom did so well is. Uh, you have that you have that seventies feel early on, and right. I remember I, I love this aspect of filmmaking. So, I mean, my favorite thing I get to sit here with Graham, we get to be the representatives in some way for this film. But every day I step on set to get to collaborate with people who have done so much in this industry and uh, are craftsmen, artists like. Uh, like you've never seen. And for me, I'm astonished every day when I get to see the collaborative efforts of so many. So when Tom steps on set, we're doing a, a scene from the 70s and has things handheld and a little bit uh, more, uh, I, I think, in your face and, and less polished because the band is less polished at that time and see things eventually get, you know, to, to be put on tripods and dollies and whatnot later on. You see this, uh, this arc of the band and the cinematography in unison. It's a beautiful thing to watch. So I like to stay on set all the time as much as possible and learn from these incredible artists. Uh, and of course, you know, as we said, John Ottman, Paul Massey, I had Jan Sewell doing my makeup who, uh, Thank God you brought to me. She right. is a lifesaver and someone I would love to work with. She gave me a, a prosthetic nose that <laughs> only on the, the second to the last day of shooting did uh, uh, Pete and Dave Cousins, Dave Cousins is fully focused. Uh, he heard me talk about the nose and he said, excuse me, I've been pulling focus right. to your pupils for months. I had no idea you were wearing a prosthetic. So thank her and Julian Day for these incredible costumes. Uh, can, can we talk about um, that the whole that the Wembley scene and how that was shot? I mean, it, it, it doesn't look like CG people, but it has to be. <laughs> but um, you shot that at Wembley? No, because Wembley doesn't look like that anymore. Wembley's been, Wembley's been rebuilt. Okay. Um, so we shot it in a, uh, like an old airstrip out in North London. And it was our first week of shooting. Which it was your first, was first week, week of shooting. Oh which you can imagine the actors are very pleased about. Um, you know, we were in September, we were going to go into weather issues and for just uh, budgetary reasons and a few other reasons, it made sense to shoot it first. And, it was very tough for these guys, but I have to say, you know, I've made a few films um, before, and I got to a live aid set, to be heard of a live aid set, and just broke down. I mean, I got, you could feel it on that stage, and just 10 years of my life, and I'm standing there with Brian May and Roger Taylor, and we're watching these guys, and their mouths are like this. I mean, it was like, they've never seen anything like it. And we knew um, that we had something so special after that. A few week in a few days, right? We gave you yeah. a few days. You did. <laughs> you did. You did give us a few. Uh, yeah, one thing I came to. Uh, it was difficult uh, on day one. Uh, we started with that. You, you just saw it, so you may remember that crane shot that comes right through the audience. Uh, and that was uh, supposed to be a rehearsal, but I was in costume and makeup, so I really was shooting this for real. Um, <laughs> That was day one, and we did Bohemian Rhapsody right after that. <coughs> the next day, Radio Gaga, and uh, after that, the Deos, and song a day. Uh, every song a day. Right. And we actually did the whole Live Aid performance that Queen did, and that will be on the DVD. Yeah. 
That was only because I said to Graham, I'm not, I'm not getting it. I'm just playing catch up. And because uh, we would punch in for certain shots uh, of, of each particular song. And I said, what we need to capture that same adrenaline and uh, have it as streamlined and beautiful as the original show was is to do it all at once. So uh, Graham granted us Maybe. an extra day. <laughs> And we shot it all the way through, I think three times, right. and it was uh, one of the most magnificent right. experiences. How, how many people did you have in the test to create that sense the of... The extras? Yeah, just it's it's maybe real... 500 or something. Yeah, yeah. Point. yeah. Mm -hmm. we had quite a few, we had quite a lot, yeah, so we wanted to create an atmosphere. <laughs> and it was, um, as again, when you're standing on that stage and I'm watching the band here with Rami here and then these extras here doing Radio Gaga or whatever, it just gives you that same emotional feeling as you guys get in the film. And that's that's kind of what it was like every day to shoot this film and, and to just go on every day of, of scene after scene and, and watch these guys take on these characters was, was amazing. I mean, Willem and, and Joe and Ben and, you know, Mike Myers showing up for a couple of days. <laughs> and, you know, Mike's a good friend and for years we spoke about this and I said, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna write a role for you because you're gonna say that one line. Yeah. And he was fantastic, and, and it, it was all kind of, we became this family, like you do on most films, but this one felt special because everyone was doing it for the passion of making this film for Freddie. I, I do want to open it up to questions, we don't have a lot of time, but oh, there are some questions. <laughs> right, I'll, start, I'll start with the back because people up front always get to we'll get to you guys. Um, back there, so yes. <laughs> I have a question that everyone must have on their mind. Um, how did you survive with Freddie's teeth in your mouth oh. for so long, and what were the consequences? Oh. <laughs> I, uh, you know, those teeth I asked you for very early on, as I before before there was a studio. Uh, I said one thing I need is. I need a, a dialect coach and uh, I need those teeth. So um, I practiced with them for about a year. So I got I got so used to them. And honestly, there there I think I I kept them in most of the time on set. Uh, there was one moment when I took them out towards the end of shooting in the makeup trailer, and I'm not necessarily a method actor but I did enjoy spending so much time playing Freddie Mercury and staying in that voice but there was a moment when I, I took the teeth out and talked to the makeup bus and my American accent and they just looked at me like I was an alien. Like you were a robot. But um, but the teeth I, I I felt naked without them when I did take them out. So uh, they came Okay, okay. okay, I heard John. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Okay, so, uh, we'll get you too, don't worry. to approach because he is so magnetic and an icon and the way I could relate to him as uh, you know he immigrated to London from Zanzibar when he was uh, in his teens and his name was Farouk Bulsara, Freddie Bulsara and trying to discover himself uh, his identity in so many ways and sexually as well but the way I could relate to that is being a first generation American as well. So I echo your thoughts and uh, 
it means the world to me that I, I get to stand, sit here, I guess, in front of all of you and share this moment with you and so many other people who identify with that human being and feel like, you know, you know, we can do anything we want to do. We can be anything we want to be. And uh, it, his message of authenticity and inclusivity, which I got to say at the Golden Globes the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Congratulations. Go ahead. You had the, the young woman behind you had something like that. Um, I, you know, I try, uh, I try to walk away from every character and I, you know, I wouldn't call it a ritualistic way, but you gotta, you gotta move on and, uh, it's sometimes easier to do it when the, the characters, uh, Elliot, I always keep in the back of my pocket somehow, but, uh, it, it's, it's easier to walk away from him than Freddie Mercury and I'll tell you why that is, is because, I really fell in love with that man, and uh, it, I don't want him to go away. I don't want to shed him. I, I've learned so much from him. I appreciate him so much, and uh, every time, you know, being at the Globes with you and Brian May and Roger Taylor, Taylor, I want to keep that alive in some way. Right. Not that not that it needs to be there, but perhaps uh, I just I just enjoy you know existing some way with him having a run. Uh, around, which is so tough to talk about without sounding too, uh, too artsy or ethereal. Next question. Yes, you. Yeah, 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 First, uh, first question, by the way. I told you to ask that. Um, no, go ahead. It's for you. No, you first. I was terrified every day. I'm a producer. <laughs> go ahead. Seriously. What was the most fun? Oh, my God. I mean, huh. well, certainly when Mike showed up doing those, those the scenes with him it was because he's such I mean he just like off the cuff I live in and you're just like trying not to laugh through the take and you're just running out of the room because you just want to bust off that was a lot of fun um live aid of course I mean the live aid moment was was again I'm not playing this role I'm standing at the side of the stage just enjoying it all and you know you know Sharon this has been a passion project for me for so long that every scene was just like delicious to be there and, and see the guys come together and the more they got into the character the more you know Brian May and Roger Taylor would, would be there and we would just be like looking at each other like oh my god look at this this is amazing so it was all the time for me the the, the scariest moment <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a three hour <laughs> yeah there's a lot of time to talk about the scary moments there, there were it was a tumultuous time and uh, there were moments when, when it was difficult, but I will say the most fun was for me towards the end, uh, the very end. There's that scene at, in in Rio uh, where you know Freddie is he's leading the audience uh, and kind of conducting them, and that was the last scene I shot, and I got to uh, conduct. Uh, in front of the camera and take a bow. And <coughs> at that point, I felt I'm extremely flexible. <laughs> and so my bow felt really good from take one. And it came to about take four when uh, I thought, what is going on? That I, uh, Dexter's asking me to keep bowing and bowing. And I come up from take five and uh, the entire crew had surrounded me at that point and started to applaud as I come up. And he was only asking me to bow that many times so he could assemble everyone that had worked their butts off. And uh, it was the sweetest moment I've ever had on camera. So, thank you for that question. Great question. <laughs>
I, I think we're going to have to wrap it up. Of course, we have a lot of questions. But, um, one more. One more. One more. One more. Okay. One more. Okay. So one more. more. Oh, one more. Oh. Here. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take these two and then we'll go. Yes. I just wanted to say thank you for making the movie. My kids who are age 16, 13, and 10, they all been singing to Freddie Mercury's songs since, at, you know, after watching the movie. But um, a lot of their friends, middle schoolers, wanted to know is there going to be. Said, go ahead. Is there a question? You ask a question. Yes. Yeah, is there going to be a, like a movie about Freddie Mercury as a boy or a pre live A movie about Freddie Mercury? Is there going to be one? Yeah. Like a prequel? No. I, we actually did shoot Young Freddie. Uh, growing up in, in, in Zanzibar, a few scenes of growing up, growing up in Zanzibar and then going to um, boarding school in, in Mumbai. But we just, when we got into the edit room, we just found out we didn't need him. I mean, Dad said so much at the table at lunch, he gives all the information out. So, no, I don't know how we would quite carve the rest of his life or prior life into a film. Okay, you get the last one. Oh, Go ahead. Okay. When, when, when Queen comes around on tour this year, are you going to do any performance with them? And yeah, I can get a picture with you, please. Uh, the performance uh -huh. will, I will do will be from the audience watching that. Because I cannot wait to see what they come with uh, this next year. I've seen them about five or six times so far, and I will continue. So thank you all. Thank you all.